Hey guys, I know a lot of you streamers out there want that new stream deck that costs a lot of money. Today I'm going to show you how to make that $150 down to 5. So what is a stream deck? So basically a stream deck is having extra buttons that can do things on your computer that are not part of your original keyboard. Like you can have stream decks on your iPad or a phone, um, but sometimes that's not so good for your setup. So what I researched online is that there is a way to do this. All you need is another keypad. So you need about $5, order a keypad from eBay or Amazon, wherever, and it doesn't need to be anything special. It can be really simple. This one cost me about $5. Now, you're going to have to plug it into your computer and download an application called Lua Macros. Now, once you plug in your new keypad to your computer, it's going to recognize your keyboard and your keypad as one item, which won't work for our situation. We want to change our keypad into a separate thing for the computer. Meaning, when we hit a button on here, we don't want it to be a 9. We want it to be something else. Or if we hit the 5, we don't want it to be a 5. We want it to do something else. Now, the problem with this is that a lot of people use applications to change buttons, which is great. That works. But if you change what happens on this 5, it will also change what happens on this 5 which is not good for our situation. So we need to get the computer to realize that these are two separate pieces of hardware. Now I want you to open the file I have linked down below in the description. This file has a lot of code in it. Now, this is not my code. I'm not taking credit for it, but you do have to alter this code to fit your specific keypad. So let me explain what's going to happen. We're going to hit the play button. When you hit the play button, it's going to ask you to identify this new keyboard, which is your new keypad. So you can press any button on this keypad to identify it. I'm just going to hit a random one, two. What that did is it gave us some information. Now down below, I want you to go to the top of the first number that it gave us. System ID. Now this is a long string. What we're going to do is look for a number that comes after the and symbol and it looks something similar to this right here. 1B0D845C. Now yours is going to be different. This is not the same for you and me. This is for my specific keypad. Now, what you need to do is copy this number and then paste it or replace this number up top, the four zeros and three A's. And then you can save this file. Now what that just did, it basically changed what happens when we hit play. Now when we hit play, you don't have to identify your keyboard anymore. It already knows what keyboard it is or what keypad it is. So there's no more identifying and switching things around. All these numbers are the identifying number for each button. So let's go all the way down. And I mean all the way down. And this is the part where you're going to replace things. If direction equals zero, then return end. Ignore key upstrokes. Okay, after that, this is what you want to do. These are all of the different buttons that we have made. Let's look at these numbers. For example, let's look at 111. Let's look up top for 111. The, I the ID of 111 is right here. That's saying the number pad division button. So it's saying when the number pad division button is being hit, then do this. What is this? It says Lua macros send the key buttons as if they're being pressed in this combination. And right here it says control shift and the number nine. So when you're doing this, this is saying again, when the division button is being pressed on the number pad on the real keyboard, control and shift and nine are all being hit. So now when I press this, it will be those three buttons. So let me save this and remember this button combination, control shift nine. So let's go to my application like Streamlabs or anything you want really that allows you to type in your own combination of buttons and put control shift nine. And now this is my new scene that I'm selecting to switch to for my in-game scene and then I'm going to do the same thing for these right here. 106, 144, 8, 13. These are just my personal ones. You can do them for any button you want. But let me show you another example quick. 106, go up, look for 106, 
right here, number multiply. So when I'm pressing the number or the keypad or the number pad multiply button, then it will do this combination of buttons. It says control, shift, and the number eight. Yes, you will notice that all the numbers in the keypad you have to have in parentheses, and then you also have to have these special characters for these buttons. So control is the up carrot or the up arrow, and then the plus is shift. There are other buttons that have different characters. If you want, you can go to the Lua macro site and look at their different button combinations if you don't know what it is already. But usually control shift and a number is a good way to do it. And control shift eight, I want to make that one. Oh, I already have it here. Control shift eight is for PC cam YouTube. All right, I'm going to click done and I'm going to save this and I'm going to hit play to reactivate this keyboard. So now I should be able to hit this button or these buttons and it will switch between scenes in this application. All right, so that's pretty sweet. And there is one other little trick that I want to show you. Now, the number lock button is a bit tricky. Windows by default really keeps number lock as its own type of button. So when you hit number lock on your main keyboard, it'll still turn it off on this keyboard, which is a problem because now if you set these numbers up as special combinations in Lua macros, they will no longer work because number lock is off. So it's like a different button. So now if you put it back on, it will it will work again. But we can use this to our advantage. We can actually set up all of these buttons in one way and then hit the number lock button and have an additional set of numbers to make into new buttons. And then you can set it back and forth between those two different sets. Now, if you're like me and you don't like to switch back and forth and have to look for the number lock button, I don't want that many buttons. I only just want this and I want to keep number lock always on. And I want to utilize the number lock button and actually use it as a new button. Do the same thing like you did with all the other ones in Lua Macros. In Lua Macros, go look for the number lock button. There it is, 144. I have it set up here already. If number 144, then do Control Shift Zero on the main keyboard. Now this is great, but we it's still going to turn it on and off. So we don't want that. If you want to keep number lock always on on your computer and not have to toggle it, you can do that. There's an application called Num Lock Enforcer, and it's just a simple script that you can use and open up when you open up everything else on your computer. Just double click it and it runs. And now when I click number lock, it comes right back on. A really quick tip, if you can't find the number of the button that you want to change up top, come down below and every time you hit a button on your keypad, it'll tell you the ID number for that specific button. And then you can go back up to your code and change it. And if you're a bit thrifty or you like to do a little crafts here and there, you can get some stickers and make little buttons and, you know, tape on little designs to each little button to make your own little switchboard. All right, guys, I hope that helped. I hope it wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave some comments or if you want another tutorial or um, need something to be explained better, feel free to drop a comment. Um, otherwise, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a thumbs down. And don't forget to sub so you get more content later for some tips and tricks. Peace out, guys. Dude out.